Hello everyone, welcome to the US Military Explorer YouTube channel. To cope with the numerous new weapon systems that the Russian Army has fielded in recent years, the US Army has modernized its striker vehicles. On May 9th, 2019, over 130 weapon systems rolled through Red Square in Moscow. NATO nations were warily watching as Russia showed off its latest military hardware. As T-14 Armada tanks, BMPT-72 Terminator multipurpose tank support combat vehicles, T-15 heavy infantry fighting vehicles, and BTR-82A armored personnel carriers drove by the reviewing stand, they proved that Russia has been hard at work upgrading its mobile striking power. In a few short years, the Russians have developed and deployed a new generation of ground combat vehicles. Since the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014, the threat of conflict in Eastern Europe has spurred NATO to upgrade and upgun its own armored forces. For the US Army, this means the fielding of the M1A2 SCP V3 main battle tank, the development of a new infantry fighting vehicle, and major improvements and new variants of the M1126 Striker. The U.S. Army's M1126 Striker is produced by General Dynamics and provides the U.S. Army with a number of rapidly deployed fire brigades that can move by air or sea to deter opponents in Eastern Europe. The Striker is a versatile, eight-wheeled, light-armored infantry carrier that was first fielded in 2002. It is air transportable by C-130, C-117, and C-5A aircraft. The C-5 can carry seven strikers and the C-17 aircraft can carry four. A single U.S. Navy Spearhead Class Expeditionary Fast Transport EPF, can carry a company of strikers at 43 knots across moderate seas. The striker cannot swim or ford rivers without expensive preparation. Depending on the configuration, the average cost of a new striker is about $5 million U.S. dollars. The Striker was highly successful in past combat operations in the urban centers of Iraq. In the less urbanized terrain of Afghanistan, the Striker encountered more difficulties, but eventually proved itself again. The 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team SBCT, sent to Afghanistan during the 2009 surge was the U.S. Army's 5th SBCT from Fort Lewis, Washington. The 5th SBCT deployed 350 Strikers and approximately 4,000 troops into combat in the densely vegetated valley of the Argandab River, northwest of the strategic Afghan city of Kandahar. This terrain was not ideal for strikers and consisted of narrow trails, stone walls, and a patchwork of densely planted orchards that made close-in ambushes the favorite tactic of the enemy. The Afghan insurgents successfully employed IEDs in this restricted terrain and in the first few months of combat operations, the 5th SBCT lost 21 strikers to improvised explosive devices, IEEDs, with 21 soldiers killed and as many wounded. According to the U.S. Army report on the fighting, the worst incident occurred in October 2009 near the town of Jellaran, where a massive 18,000-pound IED detonated under a striker from Charlie Company, killing seven soldiers. These losses caused the Army to reassess the V-shaped hull of the striker and led to the development of an improved double V hull, DVH, designed to channel the blast force away from the vehicle and its occupants. In spite of the difficult opposition in the Argandab fighting, the striker proved an excellent combat vehicle in direct firefights and the remote weapon systems, RWS, was praised by the soldiers of the 5th SBCT. First Lieutenant Daniel Boyram, who fought in the Argandab, noted, The amount of firepower and infantry that the carriers can put on the table and the air guard hatches and RWS make the Striker an unstoppable vehicle in a shootout. The Striker currently has 12 configurations, with more variants soon to be added. The RWS platform used for Striker vehicles is the Protector RWS, manufactured by Konsberg of Norway. According to Konsberg, the Protector is the most fielded RWS in the world, with more than 20,000 units delivered. 
and in use by militaries around the globe. The U.S. Army's version of the Protector is termed the Common Remotely Operated Weapon Station, CROWS. In an open competition, Konsberg was awarded five-year contracts for the delivery of the Protector RWS Crows 2 program in 2007 and again in 2012. Crows 2 is a joint acquisition program for weapon stations for all U.S. Army vehicle programs. A third five-year contract, signed in September 2018, will enable Konsberg to continue providing Crows to the U.S. Army. Crows have been placed on over 8,000 U.S. Army vehicles, and including the HMMVW, Strikers, and the M1A2 Abrams. The Crows provides for greater protection and increased weapons accuracy. It allows soldiers to operate from inside the protection of the vehicle without exposing the gunner to enemy fire. The gunner observes the target through a display screen that provides daylight and thermal options and controls the weapons by means of switches and a joystick. The sensors include stabilized precision options with a daylight video camera, thermal imager, and an iSafe laser rangefinder. The key capability of the Crow's aim and fire function, the detached line of sight DLOS system, enables the gunner to keep his sights on a target, independent of the ballistic solution for the weapon and ammunition in use. The system's camera can identify targets nearly 1.6 kilometers away track targets moving as fast as 56 km per hour and has a 95% accuracy rate. The crows on striker vehicles also include integrated smoke grenade launchers that can provide obscuration in directions independent of the vehicle's orientation. The Unmanned MCT-30 Turret The U.S. Army has worked with Konsberg and other defense companies for the past several years to rapidly field a new 30mm cannon an unmanned turret to the 2nd Cavalry Regiment, 2CR, stationed in Vilsack, Germany. The 2CR, also known as the 2nd Dragoons, is an active striker-equipped cavalry regiment of the U.S. Army. The new striker configuration fielded to the 2CR is designated as the M1296 Striker ICV Dragoon. The Dragoon has an unmanned MCT-30 turret that is produced by Konsberg and an MK-44 Bushmaster II 30mm autocannon designed by Alley and Tech Systems of Northrop Grumman. The 30mm chain gun autocannon can reach out to 3,000 meters, holds 156 ready rounds in the turret, 78 per side, and has the capability to fire single shot or burst fire up to 200 rounds per minute. The 30mm cannon can fire either direct fire-high explosive or airburst rounds. The MK310 programmable airburst munition rounds are programmed to detonate above the targets to defeat troops in trenches or in defilade and can destroy trucks, drones, and helicopters. The turret has coaxically mounted M240 machine gun with 400 rounds of 7.62mm. While the addition of the turret added 2 tons to the vehicle's weight, there has been no significant loss of performance. Meeting NATO Obligations NATO is facing a significant military threat that requires all NATO nations to meet their treaty obligations. Some members, however, are years behind their pledge to fund, upgrade, and field adequate forces as part of the alliance. With a few exceptions, NATO nations have not developed and deployed new tanks infantry fighting vehicles, or light armored vehicles since the 1980s. The U.S. has responded to the threat and is enhancing NATO's ability to respond by upgunning the strikers of the 2D Dragoons with 30mm cannons and Javelin Crows, and plans to upgrade more SBCTs in the next two years. Eventually, all nine U.S. Army SBCTs, seven regular Army, two Army National Guard, will be upgraded. The U.S. Army even plans to mount 50 KW-class multi-mission high-energy laser MMHEL in the next four years to protect against unmanned aerial systems, UAS, helicopters, and incoming rocket, artillery, and mortar rounds. In addition, the U.S. Army has recently added a company equipped with the light-armored vehicle LAV-25A2s armed with a 25mm cannon in a manned turret and borrowed from the U.S. Marine Corps to the 82D Airborne Division based at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. 
The LAV is lighter and smaller than the Striker, but it is of the same general design and has a commonality of parts. While these lightly armored LAVs are the 82 Airborne's only organic armored vehicles, they are better than no armored vehicles at all. And that's all for today's video. I'm very happy and thank you for watching today's video. Hope you guys encourage us by one like and one subscribe. Now say goodbye and see you in the next video.